Hello, welcome member and non-member alike. Uh, welcome everybody, huh? So this is our promised video where we're right. reviewing questions, hot takes, etc. from the community. Right. We put out a community post. If you're a member and you didn't see it, then you need to pay more attention to our little subscription box. True. And we asked you for your best questions, best hot takes that we could, that you could muster. And some of them are appalling. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've read through some of them. Some of them are atrocious. Some of them are fantastic. <clears throat> and there's everywhere in between. So yeah. we've got a bunch of them here. We're going to try and rattle through them a bit like uh, speed dating, I suppose, or speed questions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. See if we're compatible with... Yeah, right. Yeah, with the questions, sure, I guess. Of course. Are you ready, Avast? I I was born ready. I mean, after <laughs> I, I'm always worried to see what's gonna pass in front of our eyeballs though. Is oh yeah, I that's the fear. other part to this. I haven't shown Avast a why at these, so <laughs> it's just me and Kurt. Let's roll the first one, Kurt. What have we got here? Mac and Dam. Hello, Platchat crew. Thank you for everything you guys do. Hot take. David P is one of the most fun players to watch in EU and deserves another shot in a top five team. The Lurk Master. What do you think? I find him entertaining. Uh, yeah, pretty, An, pretty top entertaining five team, fellow. I mean, he's already in a top he's five kind team. Of just, is he not? I mean, on that's a true. I guess he's sort of. Yeah, I guess if you because of Giants, I mean, right? So. I guess I suppose he's on a top six team. So right with uh, <laughs> yeah, Giants and Liquid could play an exhibition match and on land in Bermuda. To so find I mean, out. essentially, hasn't Final this spot. already come true? Almost. I mean, you say come true. This was three days ago. This wasn't a wish that they put in a bottle and cast out into the ocean six months ago. <laughs> this, well, this yeah, is what, I'm, what I'm thing. saying is that like, but they're saying like deserves another shot in the top five team, but considering that they're already hovering around five, six anyways. Yeah, I mean, in an overall EMEA ranking, I guess you'd still have like Fnatic above them and stuff like that. So maybe it pushes Giants down a little bit further, but they're still a good team. Yeah. I think the Giants is the right team for David P as well. It's a team that's built around around him and around a lot of aggression. He's got other people there that understand how he wants to play. He, yeah. His move over to Omen facilitates more of his play style. I think, I think he's fun to watch I, right now. I don't think you need to change anything about it. I agree. And I think that, I mean, I think for David P to be on a top five team, Giants just need to solidify themselves in the top five. I don't see him getting a chance on another, like right, on paper yeah. top five team. I think Giants just have to take that next step to, to being there, yeah. I guess, solidified. Yeah. I do find him a lot of fun to watch though. All right, what is the next question, huh? What have we got here then? Oh, zoom that one in. What's that? A question for ants? <laughs> That's a reference to something I don't even know. Uh, a smoke penguin. To, like, what is it a reference to, Avast? You're the reference Zoolander. master. Oh, is it Zoolander? Zoolander. <laughs> I think I watched it once. God, no Avast just... He, he's got them all. A wealth of movie reference knowledge. Pop culture. That's astounding. A bit of a tip. Tip of, a, tip of his tongue, whatever. Uh, it's it's yep. late. With the I'm seventh map being it. hinted at and the game finally having a, enough maps for a pick band <clears> system, <throat> how do you think the health of the agent pool is? So a big setup about the maps and then no question about the maps. How do you think the agent pool is? Do you think there's enough agents in the game? Do I think that there's enough agents in the game? I think that's what this question means, um, right? What do you think the health of the, the agent, pool? Is the agent yeah. pool? Are there enough things no. for I want, everything? I want more agents and I want Sky to be less good. And then I'll be happy. I also okay. want Yoru agents. to not be awful. <laughs> what, sorry? You know, I also want Yoru to not be awful. One of the oh. agents to not be fundamentally useless. <laughs> yeah, you know? no, I mean, I, I totally agree with that. I yeah. was worried that KO was going to fall in the same kind of pit as well. The thing is, when you end up having like, I don't know, what, what do we want to say? Like 30 agents? Like at some point when they get to that area, some of them are going to be trash. You can't play them all. Some of them are going to be poop. And they're going to have to take them out, rework them, put them back yeah. in. Some of them are going to be okay. busted. That's, that's the way it goes when there's just so many agents available. I think they've done a good job so far. I, I was, think the I was balance worried of the about game, it. Yeah, I think that, I mean, since the initial adjustments from like the game being launched in beta, where obviously it's like Rays was too good, Sage was too good, etc. You know, they just don't have, obviously they don't have enough data in-house from just the devs playing to perfectly balance the game with like 12 agents on launch or whatever mm -hmm. it was, right? But as time has gone on and new agents have been added, I, I have been pleased with the level of the agents in regards to their just impact, how good they are. Yeah. Um, 
I think the agent pool... I, I, I like where the game is at right now. I just think that Sky is a little too good. That's really my only one. I like that Sky is viable, though, because I think Sova needed an alternative. Yeah, but the problem... But then but a lot of people are in a world Sova where it's Sky. like, well, Sova's busted, so let's get another busted initiator. <laughs> and yeah, then, oh, yeah, too much yeah. Sky, we need another busted yeah, yeah. initiator. It's Tell just, you what I want to see. I want to see another agent that's a bit like Cypher, but can get a bit more active in the round, maybe. But an information gatherer that's something where your utility stays up. Something mm. like a Cypher or a Killjoy, but they don't specifically have to be designed to um, lock sites down. I'd like sure. to see something where maybe, uh, listen, I'm bad at agent design, but something where it could be a bit more offensively um, viable. What is the next question then, huh? Smoke Penguin, thank you for that one. And zoom it on in. Shikadead. What do you think about the players talking about throwing seeding games? Should there be more of an incentive to try in these games? Um, now, we've said many times that they should just redesign the system so there aren't seeding yeah, I mean, games that is to be the played. the fundamental problem. From this point on, there should never be a, another seeding game again. They have been a topic of discussion for an entire year as the VCT has been going. Nobody likes them. Fans don't like them. Players don't like them. They don't really provide anything. I'd like to counter that point slightly, though, in that... The way that the tournament is, the way the system is currently set up, even Masters is a seeding game for champions, really. Like, if you get certain, certain depth towards it, you're just playing for seeding for champions. But the difference is branding. The difference yes. is international competition and the way that Riot brands the events. If they made more of a song and dance around being, you are the winner of EMEA, and, you know, there's like a fucking buddy or whatever, or whatever, you know, in terms of them bigging it up like it's a huge accomplishment to be the number one team from your region, mm -hmm. then it, wouldn't, it would stop being seen as a seeding game and it would start to be perceived as something that goes down in your history books of like you won a domestic championship, you know? Sure. Like the Ignition series. Like, you know, you've won a title tournament. I think that's a, one direction they could go in as well where you don't remove the seeding games, sure. but they I, try and make I, them feel more important. Yeah, that I think that's that is pretty reasonable. Yeah, the the I mean, yeah, the entire circuit is just built around the international events. Why even? Right. Why even bother? Right. Right. Um, but I, I I still think ideally it's just not even a part of the system. Um, I also want to see them. Actually... I mean, should there be more incentive to try and win these games? Of course. Um, but. Something I love, Avast, from Overwatch is when you get to pick your opponent. I think that always gives a cool aspect, even to seeding. Because then when you get the number one seed, you don't have a situation like Berlin where it's like, oh, well, we happen to get the group of death even though we were number one seed. It's like, no, motherfucker, I get to pick who I'm playing against. I, I love that Yeah, aspect. picking picking would be cool. I mean, also, I feel like most of the... the 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 arguments around seeding games are just the fact that like because of international competition and seeding and the lack of data, they're trying to build this system right. Where like if it was a perfectly designed system with seeding, right? I don't think anyone would like argue against seeding matches potentially, right? Like if we had like all the data in the world available and we had fucking IBM Watson with all and we could crunch the numbers <laughs> and we could like. Put them in there and be like, okay, like this is a perfectly seeded match. No one complained about seeding games. Yeah, you mean if, if the seeding seeding actually mattered, if it made a huge difference? Easier. Yeah, if, if, exactly. But like the big portion here is that like we're the problem with seeding games currently is that we don't have enough data to make the seeds worthwhile. Right, and right. even domestically, if you get a high seed, I mean, you're going up against a team that might be on a hot streak anyway, and then fucking nonsense. Yeah, right. and, and to me, some of this just feels like it's just like you know. Players are going to complain about systems no matter what, but like there are options to at least remove a seeding and then, you know, who knows? Maybe down the line, everyone's going to be like, fuck it, we want seeding back. And then we're going to go back to seeding because I feel like that happens a lot that in, is, in gaming that in is, general. That is always the cycle. That is the cycle. <laughs> I hate the way ranked works. It changes. I miss when we could five stack in Radiant. <laughs> like that's... <laughs> no, genuinely, I mean, that's... It that is. Is, that is, literally, yeah. gamers are goldfish. And that it's is happen. what has happened. Happen. Yeah. All right, well, let's see what the goldfish have got for <laughs> us next. <laughs> It is Jevi, 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 something like that. Thank you for the question, though. What maps do you think deserve to be reworked in the near future? Icebox, Icebox, Icebox. Sorry, continuing with the question. I know Icebox and Bind are often brought up by pros in the community. Do you agree? And or are there others you'd like to see reworked? Fuck Icebox with a stick is what I would say with that. <laughs> it needs to be. It needs Jesus. to be reworked significantly. 
it is boring. It is yeah. fundamentally a boring map. And I don't even find Bind to be that boring. I understand why people are not big fans of it. But I think it could exist in a seven-map pool as the one weird one where there's no mid. And I wouldn't mind. I'd be like, okay, well, it's, it's different at least. Icebox is dull. I mean... Dude, I'm dark as shit, by the way. I'm going to turn on my light. Yeah, you're <laughs> in the fucking gamer in dungeon. Uh, yeah, I mean... For me, it's like Icebox, I think, is fun in pickup games and ranked, but it's just tragic to watch pro play because it's just the same thing over and over and over. And You for almost me, get punished bind, for going outside the mold. You do. Yeah. Whenever I see a team attempt to plant somewhere that isn't on default on B, it's With like, the this is cool, <laughs> yeah. and then it doesn't work <laughs> yeah. every single time. Um, yeah, and... On Bind, I, I think that Bind is fun to watch in pro play, but I just don't like playing it in pickups as much. Right, right, right. Um, so they're kind of opposites in that way. Icebox is the real tragic one, though, because it needs. it is just so boring in pro play. It really is boring. You just see it the same thing the every time. It is formulaic map. Absolutely. Right? Like, is, yeah. Nothing's even close to like... Because you know what's going to happen almost every time. Like, if you make it... if the, Once we get to B site, we're putting up the stage wall... And we're planting, and yeah. we're we have our viper walls across, and we're gonna pop them, and we're, we're just gonna then eventually everyone's gonna spam each other for a while, and then walk through smokes and walk through walls, and <laughs> and then the site is gonna happen, and then it's gonna be done, and that's it. Very fun. Yep. All right, let's see what the uh, the next question is. This is a hot take from Buntley. The Guardian will soon become more viable than the Vandal. No explanation given. I can't justify this. I don't even know where this is coming from. Maybe this New is skins. like a crystal ball kind of theory. They've seen something in the tea leaves where they continue. They, Riot are looking at the data. The Guardian isn't being purchased, so they just continue to make it more and more viable until it's suddenly a better choice. But how Vandal. could you make the Guardian more viable when you can't spray? They there is just no one, way. It's 1,500. There's no way. That was, still wouldn't be more viable. If you had I the mean, money, you, you wouldn't be picking it more. You, you'd still pick the Vandal. Mm. Maybe if, maybe you give it maybe they give the the guardian FMJ you know and then it just like goes through every fucking any sort of surface it just goes through it so you could just you could fire it like a gauss cannon through the map and it would just like take people out yeah, yeah I feel like this is a premonition based hot take and so for some reason I'm inclined to agree with it. I like how concise it is. Something. I like how concise it is and confident but no it reasoning. sounds. But there's no reasoning. So how do we even how That's do how we you do win on the they internet. They consulted the tarot or some shit. You just, just no, that is how you, that is how you win on the internet. You say something and, and you, you just, just as long as you sound confident when you say it, someone's going to believe it. Yeah. Get up, walk away from your keyboard, leave it there, don't touch it <laughs> and people will believe it. All right. Uh, let's move on, though. I don't believe it. Buntley, you failed that hot take. Uh, Zix says, What do you feel is the reason, like some players, like all of Turkey, use the Vandal even when the hard stats say the Phantom is better in the majority of scenarios? Of course, I believe both are fully viable, but you'd think of the top-level players would swing towards the better choice statistically. Now, I do want to point out here that the Phantom being better in the majority of scenarios is not, is not like hardcore definitive. If you have a lot of smokes, and if you play in a certain way, you can generate extra value from it. But that doesn't mean that it's, you know, I was being hyperbolic when I said everybody should be playing with the Phantom. Clickbait. You should, yes, it was clickbait. You right. should you should at least have a few players on your team that do it, though, which I think is interesting that SMB in Berlin only have one player that uses Phantom on their team. Yeah. That does seem to me to be... And he is the controller. And that, that makes sense. Yeah. But... When you don't have multiple, and there's only one player that feels safe, just fucking rinsing his uh, artillery into a smoke, uh, that does feel like a little bit of a disadvantage when you go up against other teams that are just happy to do that. Yeah. Why I mean, do you play with the Vandal? It's why a big do, discussion, but it's Turkish... marginal. Oh, why do I play with it? Because when you swing and you get that one tap, oh, here comes the confidence, and then you drop 30 and you rank up. Mm. That's why. Yeah. It is it is. Then what the happens at the inverse, though? Factor. When you swing and you don't get the one tap. And you then die. you rank down. No, no, then you spray and you say, fuck this spray control, and then you die. You are no. crouched going... Do, 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 do. Yeah, no, no, well, that's why you got to unbind crouch. Uh, Unbinding crouch is the key to everything. I unbound crouch and, uh, you know, I got a promotion at work. My <laughs> wife came back to me. <laughs> everything changed once I unbound crouch. Uh, it's genuinely just you. One when you click on someone in the head, they die immediately, and yeah. I think that there's a confidence with that, and it's... Uh, 
yeah. I don't know. That's genuinely that's 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 when, a big part of why. When I was talking um, to Doma, who transitioned from Vandal to Phantom during Reykjavik, he said when he was playing online, he felt like he had to use the Vandal because if he didn't, if he didn't have the Vandal, he would hit the first bullet, and because of the ping difference, they would still kill him. Yeah, like he would aim punch them, and they would still get the kill on him. So he felt like he needed that stopping power of just first bullet equals death. Right. And he felt like at LAN it was easier to use the Phantom, and because you have such low latency, you've already killed them by the time they have any chance to react. And the Vandal that has was higher uh, bullet process, penetration. Anyway. The Vandal does not have higher bullet penetration. It does. Pen it, move on, Kurt. It's move louder. On. Move you have on. less bullets because they're bigger. You're more talking damage. about the Guardian. You're, they're louder. You're talking about the Guardian. Which will soon be better than the Vandal. <laughs> All right, move us on. What's the next one? What's the next one? Okie dokie. Oh my god, Cassis. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> I don't like this one. I like their, I like their, uh, their avatar, by the way. It's just a f you're getting flashed by Breach. Flash. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, Avast, this question is for you. Who would win? Sussy with a classic that only has right click or Bong Alien, Bong alien. with a something. <laughs> I can't remember because it's gone off the screen. Well, where, where is it? Can bring the question back, Kurt. Can it's question Sussy back? with a right click. I think it, it was this. Bong Alien with a Vandal that has permanent near sight. Mm. So you are permanently paranoid, but you have a Vandal. Or I mean, you're Sussy with a right click. I mean, honestly, I, honestly, I might be taking the right click classic on that one. Just Sussy jumping over the... I mean, because literally think about it. Sussy, the right click classic is Sus already. There's a combo there. There's a synergy <laughs> that's already happened. You're jumping around boxes. You're fucking hopping around. You're hitting the right click. You're do you dominate that Vandal 10 times out of 10. And Bong Alien is also one of the worst emotes on Twitch. Well, perhaps even... <laughs> it like, is terrible. Perhaps... perhaps <laughs> I, it honestly well, could be worse than Sussy. I... I well, well, Sussy is a lot better than Bong Alien. I like Bong Alien a lot. Bong Alien You're is terrible. You're the only person but that likes Bong that Alien. That is a great the emote. Only one. That is a yeah, fantastic it is. That is not, emote. It's not a good emote. This emote also sucks ass. No, like, that's the, a great Bong one. Alien is just also bad. Dude, you're a hater. I... Bong Alien is Kurt, not good. Kurt, pull up Bong Alien. Oh. No. Bong Alien is so <laughs> fucking dumb. That's this atrocious. Is the dumbest emote. <laughs> I, uh... I'm gonna veto this. It is really, really, really good. Oh my I agree. god! Oh, I, well, I agree. Not. But Ooh, I would, not. I would take the sussy with the right click too. Okay. Yeah. Well, seems... Sussy with the right click, I think, is that objectively like a strong pick. right click against is the best the, gun. I would, game. I would take against a nearsighted vandal. Oh yeah, against a player with a nearsighted vandal. I take right click every time. Easy right click. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What's the next question then? Uh, get us away from the the Twitch memory. I'm sure there was something else here. Here we go, from Orbity. Holy paragraph. All right, I'll, I'll paraphrase this, though. 100 Thieves were the only team that got value from KO, but it hurt them in their defensive rounds, primarily on Haven. So the other team's play style was what made the KO less effective. Do we think that 100 Thieves should have two compositions based on how the enemy teams play? Now, we discussed this in our episode when we were talking, actually, about mm. how they would match up against Gambit. Uh, where they have one where Steel plays Cypher and one where Steel plays KO. Apparently, they said in an interview, it, they use the KO to make Steel more impactful in the round. Uh, should teams prioritize comfortability or the meta? I think this is an interesting question, and I definitely agree that they should have two compositions. And if not just two compositions, two... Do not put the bong alien on top of Platchat. There it is. Oh, There's the bong. Word. Can we at least balance it out with a sussy? Yeah, can we get a sussy above the current topic? Or maybe just no. like twerking on top of a vast's head. No. Something like that. <laughs> Dude, the feng shui is fucking off in this episode now. Now my cheese <laughs> will never align. And I'm never going to be able to ascend to godhood because of this. <laughs> I, think, I think it would benefit 100 Thieves to have the KO that they could pull out against teams that like to bunker down on defense. It worked so well against X. Yeah. I, I agree. I think it's... I think you are asking a lot from that. Like, hey, practice with different comps on all the maps, ideally, against when you're going to play different oppositional styles. You think just swapping I, one thing makes a huge difference? I think it makes a difference, for sure, and it yeah. would be an extra burden for them. But I think the benefits would outweigh the negatives there. I agree. I think it's just a big ask. But mm. if, you, if you can pull it off, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the way they play with KO versus Cypher is, is pretty drastically different when you think about those agents in the lineup, though. Like, when you think of, like, all the information they gather offensively, in particular, with KO comparatively to Cypher a lot of the times, 
like I, I feel like it's a lot more proactive versus like where you just take a map control area and you lock it down with the cipher on your offense and you're like okay we know they're not here or we know they're here versus like oh we can throw a fucking knife and yeah, like we yeah. just get info you know so yeah. it changes a lot of like how you approach the map but um, it does have I the feel. payoff of being more effective on defense it does yeah also they ask should teams prioritize comfortability or meta i think you should prioritize comfortability until you're losing to the meta what okay. do you guys think i think that at this point when there's so few agents in the game if your comfortability means you can't play meta you don't have a future in valorant yeah i kind of think that's the case right now like i think well it depends on the comfortability if someone's comfortability is being a jet one trick you're fine <laughs> But, right, right. But, but yeah, if your comfortability if, is you're a Phoenix main. If comfortability uh -oh. and the meta yeah. are, are mutually exclusive on your team, that is a serious problem. Right. That, that is what I would say. But for uh, yeah, the long term, depends. comfortability is probably going to be better. Yep. Depends. Yep. Okay, well, let's move on to the next question. What do we got here, Kurt? Uh, Facundo Perez Oclanda says, will there be new green screen bits? So you keeping the last ones made for Reykjavik for the co-stream? Are there new meme things in the making? How much do we tell them? I, don't, I, don't, I mean, we are cooking up some stuff, but it's all a process. That yeah. means we haven't talked about it yet, but we plan on doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you have to understand that like, I got asked to do my green screen bit uh, Facundo, like literally the day before I left to Austin, essentially. <laughs> so, like, we will be better this time around, though. We'll plan it at least three weeks out. Wait a <laughs> second. <laughs> we yeah. have some ideas as to what the ideas might be. Yes. Well, one of my ideas is to release the previous green screen footage pub to the public, and they can make stuff that we can show on stream. I like that idea. That's a good idea. So I'll I like do that. that idea. I'll do that That's after a good we idea. publish this. Okay. I like outsourcing our work to other people. I love that. I yeah. love that's that a, idea. That's, that's and when we that's, don't have I to pay my them? brand off that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll pay you in clout. <laughs> Has anyone else got some great ideas in, in, in this? <laughs> Hopefully patent-free, no trademarks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, any non-trademarked ideas. What have we got next? Brian. Hot take. G2 mm. will lose to F4Q in groups to be knocked out of the tournament. We is this that like a hot take? I, I think it's a hot take to some, but I don't think it's that hot. I think it's a... It's a warm it's, take it's for a, sure. I think it's a medium take, yeah. Okay. Well, what is the scale? Medium? How is know, medium on the scale from cold to hot? Well, I'm thinking... No, I'm thinking about like... I'm thinking about chicken wings. Like mild, medium, <laughs> hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So that's a medium chicken wing. Right, a medium chicken wing take. I mean, we discussed this exact take in the episode we filmed today for like 40 minutes. We did, we did. All right. We, well, we, you can we, watch we that episode then. You can watch the episode, Brian. Don't ask us. Ask former us that recorded a whole episode on it. Yep. Medium, this will get us more views and more money. <laughs> yes. All right, what <laughs> have we got next? ad revenue. Oh, here we go. Austin Pack says, the Chinese Valorant scene <laughs> is stronger than LATAM, SEA, and Japanese scenes. Yep. I have no knowledge so on this. I was just laughing I mean, because that I just mean, reminded what, me of when he became a member and Connor said smoke in that Austin pack. I mean, I was literally about to say that exact same thing, by the way. Because so I laughed I don't myself know where, where... from thinking of that memory where I also laughed the first time. So <laughs> I was uh, literally just about to say that because like, I, I, where is he? Because I, I want to know where he's, where he's getting his info. I want to know where he's, get, where he's learning. Chinese Valorant teams have been playing in some tournaments. They've been playing against the Korean teams and against maybe mm -hmm. some of the other Asian teams as well. I haven't really been following it. They've been mostly broadcast on, um, uh, I can't even remember, like NGA, I think is the website, where they keep VODs of stuff like that for some of the other tournaments. Uh, I don't know how good they are. When I looked at it, they were having some decent results. I wouldn't be surprised if they were better than LATAM SEA in Japan because they have actually been playing for a while. Yeah, I have not watched a single Chinese Valorant. We're going to be deep underground, you know? You got to be like, oh, what? You don't follow Chinese Valorant? <laughs> don't follow it like me? You got to be deep under fucking ground because you really it's do. not mainstream. It's not It's not hit my local Walmart shelves. <laughs> no. The DVDs hasn't. of the fucking Chinese Valorant matches not available yet. Well, Chinese stores. Valorant went straight to DVD. That's what happened to it. Yeah. And yeah, they're only available if you go out and try and purchase them via some specific vendor. 
All right, what's the next question then, huh? More Chinese Valorant, more great ideas for green screen bits. What do we got? The cat's meow. What does it take for baby TW to win the weekly award in Bala's eyes? Yeah, Bala isn't know. here, but I, I simply... I mean, being born wasn't enough. No. What kind of achievements can a baby even accomplish Who in their the first month? Who the fuck is months? baby TW? Bala's child, motherfucker. I, when, when was it referred to as baby TW? <laughs> you've been away for a while. Yeah, you've been. I, I, when, when, when did we add that? You've been caught in the hurricanes. He's, he's Bala TW, right? Bala oh, TW, and oh, so it's baby TW. TW. Okay, okay. Like baby J, baby I Bay, this, baby I thought TW. this was a new baby fresh on the scene. Like, is that just <laughs> well, hopped on the ballot? Like, baby, which it is in, in many ways. <laughs> I mean, it is but, a new I baby mean, fresh like, on the scene. But, but also, like, I thought it was like another baby, like a player that has just popped up. So. I don't know. I suppose when you're, like when you're very phase. young, I think it would be something like speaking much earlier than expected, walking mm. much earlier than expected. You know, hitting some yeah. developmental milestone months earlier than they than yeah. they would normally. That's something that's worthy of. What if the baby hit it like way slower? The average baby too. What if it was like it just spoke <laughs> like when it was like ten years old for the but first that, time? Or something? That, I mean, I suppose that's an achievement if it was executing like. Um, what's the word? Discipline, like self-discipline. Yeah. I will not yeah. speak like a monk. <laughs> yeah. it just comes straight out of the womb and it decides not to converse. But I even then, the, the award would be given ten years from now. Well, yeah. that's that's fair. But still, <laughs> we'll, you can we'll the award. revisit the award depending. We'll see what happens. We'll ask Bala. Does Baby TW join Phase? We'll see. You know. Yeah. All right. What's the we'll next find one? Out. What else have we got up here? Okay, Smeagmaster76. Baby Bay was once my oh Smeagmaster. Now just dirty hobbitses. He's fallen off, no Kizzler. Genuinely, though, I think that FaZe Clan need to be looking at larger reshuffle. At this point, it's clear they're not going to be able to recapture the magic they had during VCT Stage 1. Especially when hanging on to pieces such as Raucus, who hasn't shown any potential in being a top-level Sova whatsoever. Curious as to what you think. I think that it's a little unfair to Raucus to brand him as no potential at being a top-level Sova whatsoever. Because if you hold him up to the same caliber as, like, a Crashies or something, all right, he hasn't shown the potential to get to Crashies level. But he has been competent at a Tier 1 level, even, in their most recent games when they were playing... I think his, uh, most, like the I think his VCT Stage tournament. 3 is the best he's looked. Yeah, and he looked competent and so i think yeah. it's a little unfair to use harsh language like has shown no potential in being a top level server whatsoever because he hasn't been a disaster having said that it does seem like a I, shuffle is inevitable and it does seem like raucus would be one of the first pieces to try and mix around i think what smeagmaster 76 may be getting at with that statement is more so that he doesn't he hasn't shown the potential of being a top level sova I feel like what they mean is probably like, you know, like a top top four, top five. You're in that like yeah. elite yeah. elite tier, which it doesn't look like he'll be there. No, but no, is he doesn't. is he competent in that like, you know, eighth to twelfth ish? Maybe even a little higher than that. Mm, the, yeah, I don't know. I would have to. I would like sit to see yeah, a list of a NA sobers would help, but. Yeah. Are they going to get rid of Raucus, though? Probably not, because they're good friends with him. They came from mm. Overwatch together. I don't think get that's Derek likely. But where is the line drawn for FaZe at this point? Like, if they can't get a result, you know? Like, there has to be, at some point, a line drawn in the sand. There has to be an Alamo moment. Okay, eventually. but you are from Overwatch, and you know how long Raucus lasted despite having massive underperformances in, ah, in but, that but game. The, but, that was, but that was different, though, because that was different because we call that the flame effect. So that was very different. There's very, very different rules here, right? There's not... I, I don't know. I don't know Do how... Do you think that FaZe has a strict GM that's making decisions for them? I don't think so. I they got know. Corey to build the roster for them, and they're just player run as far as I can tell. I mean, maybe now that they have a coach, but I don't think from small interactions with um, Trippy that he would be, like, ruthless in that way, you know? He I mean, doesn't I know strike they have me a as manager, a ruthless But coach. I don't think that's... Yeah, I don't really think that's their MO, is yeah. trying to reshuffle or cut their way to the top or, yeah. or anything like that. I mean, it seems like they're 
They're just I, trying to get there with what they've got. They'll win um, through entropy. Everyone else will just fall down <laughs> and eventually they'll walk to the pack. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, I agree with you that it doesn't seem like there's any chance they recapture that magic they had during VCT stage one, but I think they should be aiming to be in that fifth to eighth spot in North America, and they yeah. can do it with this roster. They could. Yes. They look like, they in this last VCT, I feel like we saw a phase that, yeah, can consistently end up in the top eight, which is honestly a pretty impressive place for them to be in i would hope that they want more than that you know of course they're, they're trying to win and i mean i'm sure they're trying to win to, but i don't think they have that ruthless mentality to get to the top i don't think yeah. i think if you're a fan of phase and you want that org to be at the top it's almost certainly going to be with entirely different players because i really don't think that team is going to make the moves that are like necessary to rip yeah, big pieces out in order to potentially get the improvements just from what I understand about the players they're all just fucking nice and they've been friends for a long time and yeah. I don't think they'd be willing to do that unless someone was clearly lagging way behind and I think yeah I mean I feel like they've ended up in a, in a pretty reasonable spot too yeah I mean and they're going to be in the last chance qualifier yeah so we'll see uh, we'll see what they're made of then a bit more time with baby J yeah okay what have we got next huh Another one? <laughs> ah, there yep. had to be one, didn't there? A little little crew fan. Leo says, crew wins Berlin. How now, does it happen? No. I've I asked, mean, tell can, me okay. how it happens. I was on the crew. I was a little bit on the crew copium at Iceland. Now, at this point, if I were to get back under the crew copium, I feel like I would have to be doing like of but I'd be the equivalent of doing like a vanilla ice reunion tour. It's like we'd be touring the US and shit, doing ice ice baby. Like I, it's it's way past the expiration date. Like I crew wins Berlin when uh everyone else forgets to set their watch and they show up in time and everyone forfeits. <laughs> Who wins? I there you go. I'm gonna sell you on a world then. I'm gonna look Doctor Strange like into the universe. Okay, I'm gonna sell one, you on a world. There's one timeline. Okay, here's the thirty nine thousand where it doesn't happen. Here's the All timeline. Right. Crew start out in their group, right? The crucial thing is that they manage to get a win over Zeta Division, and then uh, when they get knocked to the lower, Vivo Keyed, right? right? That's their path out, and not totally unreasonable. Not unreasonable. They absolutely could make it. So I don't feel like I have to do too much hand waving to get past that. Yep. Zeta Division. I think they're favored. We talked about on the show that it's a bit of a toss-up there. Vivo Keyed, if they were on a hot streak and they cool off, Crew absolutely might be able to make it through as the second seed. Yep. They would face off against the number one seed. Let me sell you on this. They get faced off against the top seed from Group A, which happens to be... Vision, uh, no, no, wait, let me, let me think about this. It happens to be... Uh, yeah, Vision Strikers. Let's go with that. Okay. It happens to be Vision Strikers. They managed to get through Paper Rex. They had a crazy good game against SMB, who just fumbled everything against sure. them. Yeah. Now Vision Strikers are coming up against Crew. But... <laughs> right. Kesnit shuts them down. Yeah, their Kesnit's style, a good player. Their, their, their compositions, the utility... Vision Strikers are having an off day. Something mm. doesn't quite work. Mm. Boom. They're into a semi-final game. They face... They face... Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they, face they could face off against... Uh... 100 Thieves. Yeah. I don't even know what this bracket would look like at this point. They face 100 Thieves. Right. And they or, play, 100 gonna, Thieves play the KO, but they read the KO perfectly. Mm, they always dodge the knife. Okay. They hunt them down, brutalize them on yeah, the, yeah. when 100 Thieves are defending. Yeah. Suddenly, crew are in the finals against Sentinels. Oh, I thought you were going to say G2. No, 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 no. They're against Sentinels. <laughs> okay. The walkout happens. Tens trips, smacks his head, breaks his wrist. He's out of action. They yeah. have to sub in their coach. Wait a second. They don't have a coach. <laughs> Suddenly, Sentinels are 4v5 in the finals against wow. Crew, and yep. Crew take it all. And Crew have fucking Jason Statham as their coach, so <laughs> that's a huge advantage Damn, already. We, we smoke in that fucking Crew pack right now. Yeah. 
I yeah, that's how it happens. That's the one universe where it happens. There are if there were let's say there's thirty nine thousand universes that split off of this one. That's timeline. not many. But yeah, know, go I'm on. just throwing a number out there. Yep. <laughs> of potential ways that this plays out. I would say like maybe like six thousand of them crew get out of their group. You're pulling right. Why didn't you just do a percentage? Why did you That's start so with 39,400 and then go 6,000 of that? And That's, also, like a, that. That's also a relatively high percentage of, of that amount. I don't think it is. That's less than... 6,000 out of 39,000? That's less than a sixth. I think it might... That's higher than the chances I would give them currently. Yeah. What? I, I think that... I think, I think that they out have of 39, higher... Out of 39,400 diverging timelines... Oh, 400. 39, okay, yeah, 400. Okay. Envy make it out in like 39,300 of them. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I think VivoKeed make it out... Use percentages, for God's sake, Vivo VivoKeed make it out like 23,000 oh, at a time. Oh, so annoying. Yeah. Zeta Division make it out... Then what nine thousand times, and you've lost everyone at home. You've lost <laughs> yeah. literally everyone and at home. Six thousand timelines out of thirty nine thousand four hundred timelines crew make it out of the group. I think it's even more than that, man. I think really, it's more. yeah. Okay. I think they've got. I would say twenty percent chance of getting out of the group. Twenty mm. percent. So that's like. I think they're just Almost under 50, 50 like, I think they're just under 50 50 favored in both like of their 8, games. Don't ones. even don't even start. All right. What what else have we got? Have we got a couple last ones to finish off? Hot take from Perseus. If the top CS talent switched to Valorant, they would dominate the scene. Stewie, Elige, Simple, etc. I don't think this is a hot take. I think this is what a lot of CS fans would just absolutely expect to occur, like a cold take yeah. from CS fans. But I, I don't think it would work exactly how these people imagine it would. I don't think so either. I think Valorant has been out for too long. And at this point, I think some of them, would, it would take them a bit to get adjusted. And then they would start popping off. I think some just, I think some wouldn't, period. And some would. Uh, there's just no way that, it's just not, it's the, that's the thing though. It's not a one-to-one. -one. And people, yeah. for so, and some people, I'm not saying this person's doing it, but some people still act like it is always it is always one to one, like CS right. is equivalent to the results you will see in Valorant. Shot up will be better than tens or like whatever because yeah, of what yeah. happened, but it's just not reality. I mean, tens was like tens is far and away at least right now he's probably everyone's number in the number one in the world like player at least in regards to like fragging. Sure, he has sure. to be right, yeah, yeah. and in CS he didn't really do anything, you know. He was coming up in the NA scene, got benched, and nothing really happened. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, is, it isn't one-to-one. -one, but uh, these guys... So, yeah, I think some of them would be at the top of the scene and be on dominant teams, and some wouldn't. Yeah, Because I it's think, just not one-to-one. -one. I think the word dominate here is the thing that's wrong with it, right? They would... Almost all of them, I think, would get to top positions on good teams that were doing well in their region. Mm -hmm. But... Only a few of them would dominate because when you're selecting from a sample that's small, some are going to take to the game, some are going to not. Even if 80% of them take to the game, your chances of finding that like gem, all right, you've pre-selected a great group of people. So you've already got a better like selection bias for that, yeah. but it's not going to be perfect i mean we've already seen it with a lot of players that have shifted over even and, even great players haven't dominated yeah. the scene they've done very well but there's other people that have come out of the woodwork that you wouldn't have expected that have performed better than them yeah i mean i mean cned tens this all of your copium yes yeah. copium is what it is i mean i feel like people from a lot of people i don't know where perseus's background exactly is but a lot of people in counter-strike haven't experienced the wave of new game and game hopping and fighting against endemic players Yep. that every other genre of game is folk has played now at this point essentially outside of league and cs like every other game has had to be like you've been swapping from like apex to overwatch to blah blah, blah you know over and, over and over and all these different shooters and so there's always been a new wave of players writing that and everyone's like oh this guy's gonna roll because he's previous pro he's really good no he gets eventually they get smoked out maybe some still make it and i think this is the first wave of people realizing of, of cs people coming face to face to the realization that like 
you may be top in one game, but you're not going to guarantee top in another game, even if it's similar, because it's a whole different game and there's a whole different skill set involved still, even if there's like some overlap. And people in CS just haven't had to deal with that because they've been playing the same fucking game for like 12 yeah. years. And yeah. it's like, there's no, there is no sw game swapping that's been happening. The correlation like, like is good stuff. though. The correlation is like strongly positive if you're good at CS you're probably going to be good at Valorant. Yeah, and I think it matters also that, like, being good at CS actively, too. Yeah. Like, you could see a difference in some of the people who switch, like, Ethan coming over. Was really good player, really quickly, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, but even then, Ethan is a fantastic Tier 1 player who didn't dominate and isn't dominating. He's, like, somewhere between people's 10 and 15th best player in North America, probably. Yeah. Which is excellent. Which is amazing. That's fantastic. But he's not dominating the scene. Yeah. You know, he's not coming and in also and just rolling over the top two people. It's like the most dominant players in NA, at least in regards to like duelists and shit. Even not duelists. Tens wasn't a top player in CS. Asuma was just coming up in CS yeah. in advanced and MDL. Crashies was like in MDL forever. Mm. I mean, to give yeah. you a non-duelist. Yeah. Like, there's a, yeah, yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, it's just not one-to-one. -one. And that's also, I mean, just, Valorant is a pretty big game, and the amount of people that you have never heard of that are going to be actually dominating the scene that are, like, 17 years old yeah. in, a, in, like, a year from now, they're going to be, those guys are going to be way better than the CS people switching over. Right, the, if those CS people were ever to dominate, it would be in the first year, two years of the game. Because then after that, pfft, it's gone like the yeah. new endemic talent is just going to be way too good at that point because they've lived they've breathed valorant their entire gaming career at that point and lives yeah and make yeah, lives genuinely lives once <laughs> yeah. you get three years in and people are like i started playing this when i was 14 <laughs> yeah. it's like well all right you spent a decent chunk of your life playing this game at that point um do we have any further questions your honor one more one more question conquer c Riot are going to do the game more harm than good by trying to keep this aggressive pace of expansion for the number of agents. It will lower the average skill compared to a, lower ex a slower expansion and intimidate people starting or coming back from a break. Now, this touches on something that I really dislike about the Riot model. Um, the intimidate people starting or coming back from a break. What I, I really don't like that... If you take a break from Valorant, because there are a lot of people out there who are just general gamers. They just play yeah. games. They play multiple different games. And they come back to different games at different times. One of the ways that you're incentivized to do that in Valorant is because they add a new agent and they yeah, make yeah. them look really cool and they give them a cool trailer and new abilities. And so you want to come try that, except you have to spend $10 when you come back and yeah, play the yeah, agent. Yeah. And I really dislike that part of the model. They have to pay for the new agents. Um, I feel like, even for me as someone who plays the game all the time, I... I don't like that. No, I don't. And I, I, I don't pay for the new agents. Um, so that is one thing about the model that I, I dislike, which is a part of this um, aggressive pace of expansion. Mm. I can tell you that trying to start playing League of Legends that has, what, 100 and... I don't even know. 110, yeah. 150. I, I literally don't know how many champions are in that game. But uh, that is very intimidating. Trying to learn what your lane matchup is and how you're supposed to deal with them and what you should be scared of and where you should be positioned and that kind of stuff is a steep learning. It's not even a learning curve. It's a learning floor. Like you need to even have that knowledge to be competent in your unranked games. Mm -hmm. um, and that, okay, that's to the extreme degree. We don't have 100 agents in this game. We might get to like 30 though. And you're running around the map and you see a star on the floor and it turns into a suck and you're like, what the fuck is this? What, yeah. are, what, what am I even playing against here? And then the same star turns into a stun later on. You know, you're, you're avoiding it because you think it's going to turn into a suck and it turns into a smoke. And you're like, what? What, what the hell does this agent even do? And that's just the tip of the iceberg on the complexity that Riot could add to the game. Yeah. So I definitely think that that aspect of it is, um, is going to be intimidating for people. But the core part of the hot take here is that it does more harm than good. And I know coming from Overwatch, and I'm sure Vas can agree, if you don't put new content in your game, people are gonna yeah. mold. <laughs> yeah. And they're gonna stop playing. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is better to put content in your game. Like, you can obviously say, like, there's always a, a between 
flooding and a and a nice between a, a between a nice steady trickle and a flood that can dra- that can wipe away the the the, the villagers lo- located yeah. in their fertile crescent of the, that is Valorant. <laughs> you know, like that could be a problem. But at the end of the day, it's always better to have more content than less because people want to play the game. People want to have new stuff to do, and like. The majority of your player base, no matter what, even if it's a very esports minded game, is casual and they want to. And even if they're casually oriented and playing, they'll still trickle over to be viewership, watch things, and they need content to bring them back to the game to have them have that exposure. So, more content is better because you don't want to get in a situation where they're not adding shit. Because, guess what? I bet you're also would be a goldfish gamer and come back a couple months down the line. They stop the content and be like, Where's the content, huh, Riot? <laughs> Where is it gone? Yeah. Okay, we all yeah. think we won't fall prey to the goldfish mentality, but can. Yeah. I I honestly, so far at least, and this this may change in the future if it does get to a point where it feels overwhelming. I really like the one agent, new agent every two months. I think it's a pretty good cycle of the game, and I think so far it is. Is it every two months? Is that their idea? Yeah, I thought it was three. No, it's two. Oh my. God. It feels like a lot, but in the moment, I feel like it's a. But it's but they skipped a, one recently because they, they released did a new skip map. one for the map, yes. and that I think might be the reason that we don't feel overwhelmed, because otherwise we would have had, um, we maybe, would we would I have already know. had one and be ready for another one now. Yeah, that's a fuck ton. Maybe, but I, it, I that's what I'm saying. At least right now, I don't feel overwhelmed by it. And I think every agent, and I think for the most part, the agents that have been added so far, it's taken a bit for them to actually grow into the game and find their spot within the game. Yeah. And I don't think, I think that the poor, poor balance has not been a major issue in Valorant so far. Like, no, no Astra was very powerful, but even at that, she wasn't so powerful that everyone was playing her. No. And it was and to their disadvantage. It was to yeah. their disadvantage. But I think that still says something about her balance and the balance of new agents in the game. That it it genuinely takes a long time for people to figure out how they're best used. Yeah. KO might be better than we think. It's just so far, he just does not look like a strong agent. But even at that, he's still... You, you've yeah, seen play niche education. play, like with yeah. 100 Thieves. And that's what I even liked about Viper before. That's kind of what I like about Breach right now. It's, he's more of an, a niche pick that if you want to bring out for a certain tactic or a yeah. approach to a map, you can. And I like the existence of those agents in the game, the niche pick agents, mm-hmm. I think are cool. Um, and s- yeah, so far, I'm not overwhelmed by this agent release schedule, but also a big factor of it has been, I think the balance of the game has been good so far. Yeah. Um, even in right now, I hate playing against Sky, and I think Sky's overpowered. But it still isn't game breaking. It's not ruining anything. Sure. Um, sure. And there are teams not playing Sky. Sentinels don't even really play Sky that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And they're still winning everything. But I still think Sky is like an S tier agent. Yeah. So right now, I think it's fine. But that is a, a conversation that can be revisited. Absolutely. Definitely. All right. Well, then, thank you for your questions. Beloved members, welcomed members. Yes. Well, uh, and your hot takes. Welcome to members. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do another one of these in about a month's time. That's supposed to be the schedule for things. If you are a member as well, then the next thing that you've got to look forward to is the Berlin co-streams that should yes. be coming up for Berlin. And you'll be able to talk in the chat and have a little icon pop up next to your name and we'll all be welcoming you. And, and if you uh, just, et cetera, if et cetera. member on stream, we do the thing, the... the Pop the, the pop member. up pops yeah, up yeah, and welcome yeah, to member yeah, and you know go. what I mean. Ah, it's all fun. It's all fun. All right, but we'll see you for that kind of stuff later on. Bye. <laughs>